sub b. Now, if I put that back in there, um, yeah, it looks like it works. But all of this is nothing more than c sub p. Hence, therefore, we have ep over p equals minus dv over v times c sub p over c sub v. There's the c sub p, there's the c sub v. So we, we did a little bit of algebra uh, in a strange way simply to force this to be c sub p, which I think I've erased already, but we defined that earlier as c sub p. c sub p plus k over m was c sub p. So um, now, aha, uh -huh, that's nothing more than minus gamma dv over v. We finally have come around to an expression which will be helpful. If I integrate both sides, what do I get? I get the integral of dp over p equals the integral of minus gamma dv over v, but gamma is a constant, so we get ln of p final over p initial equals minus gamma times the uh, ln of v final over v initial, but you remember what happens when you put the gamma in there, you get ln of p final over p initial equals ln of v initial over v final raised to the positive gamma power. You exploit the negative sign by flipping the subscript, uh, by flipping the uh, uh, fraction, changing the subscripts, and the gamma becomes a positive power. But of course, if their logarithms are the same, the arguments must be the same. Hence, therefore, p final over p initial must equal v initial to the gamma power divided by v final to the gamma power. And we've actually arrived at the location we need to be. That is that p final v final to the gamma power equals p initial v initial to the gamma power. We now have an equation of an adiobat. There's an adiobat described. Any adiobatic process will subscribe to this relationship just like the ideal gas law holds and the first law holds. So this is the law of an adiobatic process. And immediately you can see that P is proportional to 1 over V to the gamma power. And we've already argued that gamma always has to be larger than 1. So it agrees with our original conclusion, and that is that the adiobat is more extreme than the isotherm. So now you've got the description of an adiobatic process. You've got the ability to calculate the work done in an adiobatic process um, because we have an expression for P as a function of V in an adiobat. All you have to do is to know which gamma applies. If it happens to be a monatomic ideal gas gamma, it's simply five thirds. If it's something else, then it's something else. All right, now you want to talk about almost perfect timing. That's one minute left in the class. How perfect is that? Questions, comments, cares, concerns? My mind is blown. Oh, that was you are wonderful people for coming on Friday like you did, so I'm going to do something special for you. I give you Monday off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Martin Luther did that. So, uh, <laughs> well, he was a good guy, too. <laughs> uh, so remember, uh, starting not next week, but the week after, we're going to go back to our original plan scheduled. Monday afternoons will be our labs. I am now working out a schedule of laboratories so that you can know specifically what's going on when. But we'll talk about that next week. Are there any other questions? Yes? Are we still going to have a double lecture on Wednesday? 
Uh, no, what we're going to have is lecture Monday morning, lab Monday afternoon. We're going to go back to the traditional schedule that, that was public. So no, not a double lecture on Monday. We're just going to have to talk fast on Mondays and Wednesdays because there is no Friday lecture. Okay, that, that video camera may help a lot because I'll be talking faster and faster. Uh, but I shall, I shall be here on Friday mornings. And this room is available to us on Friday mornings. So Friday mornings, if you guys have questions or concerns about those fast lectures she was asking about, uh, Friday morning will be the time. Come on in and we can talk about either the lecture or we can talk about homework problems. Okay, I got two more questions. Go ahead and then I'll get to you. Can we still do what we're planning to do, which is just do labs whenever they come up, but do the Monday, Monday? I'm going to try my best to fit them into the right place is what we're going to try to do on Monday afternoon. I'm going to try my best to do that. You had a question? Yes. Is this everything we'll be covering from Chapter 19? Is this everything we'll cover from This is everything we will cover in Chapter Yes, you notice, for example, there are some gray colored pages after this, uh, which are sort of above and beyond the call of duty. And he adds those things in because I'm sure, if you keep this book, I'm sure in a year or so, those topics will be very useful to you in more advanced classes. So that was another thing our author did that I really appreciate. He just sticks these things on there and says, hey, this is coming in your future. So, so as far as we're concerned, we're going to do the stuff that's necessary and no more. And uh, the gray pages are there to be useful to you later on. Anything else? All right. We've got to let the other class in here before they start getting ugly. So <laughs> see you guys uh, next Wednesday. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> I'm gonna try and stick this on YouTube actually. So to get the new point um, P2, you would take the original point and subtract the original volume and add the original temperature and subtract. So delta B, delta B, delta uh, T represent the small changes in those three state variables. Now, also considering a small change in the internal energy, we're going to have du is equal to, um, and of course it would be d of m c sub b uh, t, like that, but m and c sub b don't change, so du, change in internal energy, is capital M c sub b dt. Uh, but what we're interested in is not specifically the change in internal energy, but indeed we're interested in the change in work, the amount of work done. So dW, which is what we're interested in, is going to be equal to this thing we're looking for, PdV. So there's that internal part of the integral, and we're just going to call it dW. Um, so don't forget that Q equals zero. It's an adiabat. Adiabat. Okay, so by the first law, of course, first law, we would write um, du equals zero minus uh, dw like that. And we have for du right here, m c sub v dt, m c sub v dt, and for minus um, dw, we have minus p dv. Okay. Our problem becomes finding p dv. Well, actually, that's easy to do. Because I have now mixed up my notes. <laughs> there. I'm back in order again. Put this one down. This one here. It's easy to get uh, PDB if you recall that we simply can take the ideal gas law, which is um, PV equals um, NKT and differentiate that law. <coughs> what you end up with, of course, is D of PV 